Ja, yeah, other because um, yeah, your music is uh, obviously inf influenced by 70s classic rock. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, which current are there current uh, bands that you really like? Oh yeah, current bands. Uh, we just played a show the other night with a band called The Answer. Uh, the Answer. They're from Ireland, and good guys. Yeah, they're good very band. good guys. That I was standing out front during their sound check, and I was like, "That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear." <laughs> we got all kinds of buddies and bands out there. We got there's new bands we listen to. Um, we don't so much draw a lot of influence from them because if every band did that, then we'd all sound like the same bands today. But you know, there's all kinds of good music out there, and there's all kinds of bad music out there. It's just we'll, we'll listen to the stuff we think is real and, and heartfelt and, and good. Yeah. Okay. But um, yeah, what you said about a positive message, um, mm -hmm. I bet you're not really keen on like these emo rock bands. No, no, no. no. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, they do what they do, but it's like, man, golly, how much can you complain about? You're out here making music for a living. Yeah. You, know, you could be working a factory like everybody else back home is, so shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically, it sums it up. Okay, okay. Yeah, but about your songs, um, Lonely Train, that's mm -hmm. this uh, song with a message, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah but, it's. Um, yeah. It's a message, a lot of people thought it was strictly political, but what, uh, what it really is about is just taking a bad situation and turning it into a good situation, whether it be a war or a drug problem or an argument with your mom or dad or your girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever. Um, a lot of people related to that song because it made them sit back and, and think about something before they made any rash decisions, you know, which was what we wanted the song to be, is, you know, a power heavy rock song with a message that everyone could latch on to. Uh, yeah, but not, it, not strictly war-driven, even though we did have a lot of friends from back home that went over overseas to, to fight in the war. Um, but just the song about hope. Yeah, okay. Yeah, what you said, that I wanted to ask that. Did you, do you have relatives and friends that went oh, yeah. after you? Absolutely. To Iraq? Um, or? Oh yeah, I think all we, of us We have, have friends that passed away over there. We have friends that mm -hmm. went over there. They're still there. Some have gone over and come back home, thank God. Um, and we have friends that are sitting in forts and all over the U.S. who are just waiting to go over. Yeah. Yeah. Because wow. where, where we yeah. come from, you have, you have pretty much three options. Either you uh, graduate high school and go to college, you start work at a factory, or you join the armed forces. It's, I mean, the major choices, that's about all you really got. And a lot of them, you know, go to the armed forces because they'll pay for their education. Uh, and it's actually a career that can, you know, could stick with you for a while and it pays well. You know, so a lot of people that graduate from the schools around our area will do that. So that leaves us with a ton of friends that have either passed away or, you know, have seen some of the craziest things in the world. And, you know, they're finally back home or they're still over there doing it now. So that, of course, influenced us to the point that we, we wanted to have a song that our, our friends that have passed away, something they could live on through. We wanted to have a song that could lift our friends up that are still over there, and a song to make our friends feel good that have been over and come back. Yeah. If, um, if you hadn't been in this band, any idea, would you ended up in the army or in the factory? Or? I don't know. When I was little, I always wanted to be in the Air Force. I just wanted to fly a plane. But so you, you would have probably gone to Maybe, I don't know. Honestly, I really don't know. Yeah. Who knows? I think we were all pretty much born into what we were doing right now. Yeah. Music. Yeah, yeah that sounds easy, but it's, you're, you're probably the only ones who live from the music from your area. Huh? Well, uh, I'll say this. When I was probably, God bless, six, seven years old, something like that, um, I was watching The Muppets. You know, the little kids show. Yeah. And uh, Elton John was on there playing Crocodile Rock. That was the first time I ever saw anything to do with rock and roll music. And I saw that and I knew at that point that's what I wanted to do. And yeah. I was very young. And the same, each one of the other guys in the band could tell you a story similar to that. Yeah. So since we were very young, it's all, you know. It's when the drummer saw Animal, he wanted to do yeah. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah about this, um, sorry, again about the, the Lonely Trey song, what you say? Uh, a lot of guys who went to war, but how does it make you feel about about this war? Some die just over there. Oh, it's yeah. sad. It, it's sad. Did, that did it change your Did it change your opinion about um, the war? Uh, on the war. Oh, I don't know, man. You know, we we just we prefer talking more about rock music than we do the war these days. You know, I mean, we'll, we'll give our two cents when necessary, but we'll do it in a way that is not gonna 
side, I see the way. You know, we, you know, nobody likes a war. We'll say that. Um, yeah, and, and bottom line, what are, what are we here for? Music. You know. Yeah, there's a lot of bands that talk about political stuff, but I mean. Yeah, kind of like our buddy that's next door right now, warming up his vocals. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thanks very much, guys. Thank no you, man. Problem, man. Appreciate Thank the you. time. Thank yeah, you, guys. Thanks for your Thank you very much. Yeah. Hey, brother.